Guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to go over the guitar tone from the Partisan Component song, Snakes. The Partisan Component, if you don't already know, is a project I'm a part of with my good friend Jeff Pluva on vocals. I posted a playthrough of the song, Snakes, guitars. We also have a lyric video of the song up. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, go ahead. We'd love if you guys checked them out and let us know what you think. All the links for the song are in the description of those videos and maybe I'll put it down in this one. So this one's a little more complicated. Basically throughout the whole song, I've quad tracked the guitars and I'm using two different guitar tones. So let's just get into it. We got a lot to cover. So this is based on, um, based on a previous video. Um, I believe I named it nineties metal guitar tone, arch enemy type of thing. So this may be, exactly be that i'm not entirely sure but we'll go over it anyway so this is the first tone um here let me play before i get into it let me play a clip of the guitars in context All right. So what I did is, like I said, I quad tracked these guitars. I have one tone panned far left and panned far right. And then I have the second tone also panned far left and panned far right. But I have the second tone down 4 dB, it looks like. So let's go through it. The first tone is called 90s metal. I have my input gain on. The threshold is set at negative 60 dB and the decay is all the way down to 10 milliseconds. The first block is, surprise, surprise, the Scream 808 block. The gain is at 3, the tone is at 8, and the level is at 10. Um, I don't typically have gain, but in this tone I do. The next block is a noise gate. As I believe I explained in the previous video, I typically will throw a noise gate after a distortion block just tightens up the tone. Threshold is at negative 60 and the decay is all the way down to 10 milliseconds. Sometimes I'll play with that depending on the part of the song because um, it can choke off some notes a little bit so you want to play around with that. The amp block is a PV Panama that's based on a PV 5150. The drive is at 2. The bass is at 8. The mid is at 0. Holy scooped. The treble is at 7. Presence 2.2, channel volume is at 9, the master is at 4, the sag is at 4, the hum is at 5, the ripple is at 5, the bias is at 6.2, the bias X is at 5, and the resonance is at 5.5. Next we are going into an IR block. It is the Ownhammer OH. 412 ENG V30 42105. So basically what that is, it's a 412 angle with vintage 30s with a 421, a Royer 421. Um and 05 is the distance. So 0 would be closest up on the grill, 10 would be furthest away, 5 is in the middle. Next I have a parametric EQ block. What am I doing here? Low frequency is set to 120 hertz. The low Q is at 2.5, and I am cutting negative 2.5 dB from that. The mid frequency is at 395. The mid Q is at 5, and I am cutting 1.5 dB at that, so negative 1.5. The high frequency is set to 8K. The high Q, high Q, oh, high Q. The high Q. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Uh, the secret's revealed. I'm a dick. The high Q is 0.7. And I am boosting at 1 dB. So I'm boosting 8K. I have a low cut going. It's set to 80 hertz. And I have the high cut set at 20K. 
And then I have a verb block, a reverb block. It's the legacy room. The decay is at 4.5. Pre-delay is 11 milliseconds. The low cut is 300 hertz. High cut, 950 hertz. That's pretty low. The mix is 17% and the level is flat and the trails are off. I like to put a room block on it. Makes it sound like more of a real like a like a real amp in a real room really being recorded. We're trying to fake everybody out that this is real people. I got that suggestion from John Simons over at Sonic Drive Studios. Check his channel out. The dude is amazing. Great videos. So that's that. Now, the other tone, my uniquely named 90s metal alternative. Not like alternative rock, but like an alternative to my other 90s metal tone. So let's go through that one. Input gain is on. Threshold is negative 60. Decay is at 10 milliseconds. Then, Scream 808 distortion block. The distortion is at zero. Eh? Like the last one was set at three. This, the gain is at zero. The tone is at five. The level's at 10. Next block is another noise gate. Threshold negative 60. Decay 10 milliseconds. I have an EQ block going in to the amp. And this is similar to my last tone video or tone explanation video. I'm kind of shaping the tone of the guitar before it gets to the amp. So, what am I doing? I have the 10 band graphic EQ here. Um, I am cutting a dB at 62.5 Hz. I'm cutting a dB and a half at 125 Hz. I am cutting 1.9 dB at 250 Hz. I am boosting half a dB at 1K. Boosting 1 dB at 2K. The amp block is the PV Panama. The settings, I think, are pretty different, but we'll see. The drive is set at 2. The bass is at 8. The mid is at 0, so this one's scooped also. I mean, as scooped as possible. The treble is set to 7. The presence is set to 4. The channel volume is at 9. The master is at 4. The sag is at 4. The hum is at 5. The ripple is at 5, the bias is at 6.2, bias X is at 5, and the resonance is at 6.9. The next block is a IR block, and I am using an Ownhammer OH212ZLSFV30OH105. The, OH, um, the OH files in an Ownhammer folder are, I believe, mixed by Ownhammer. This is a Zilla 2x12 with vintage 30s. That dash 05 again, like I was explaining before, is the distance of the mic. I like own hammer impulses if you haven't noticed. I have no low cut and no high cut. The EQ after the IR. It's a parametric EQ. What are we doing? Low frequency is at 120. The low Q is 2.5 and I am cutting 2.5 dB. The mid frequency is at 395. The Q is at 5 and I am cutting 1.5 dB. The high frequency is set to 8K. The Q is at 0.7, and I am boosting 1 dB. Um, my low cut is set to 80 Hz, and the high cut is brought down to 19 kilohertz. Then I have that room decay, or the room reverb, sorry. The decay is 4.5. Pre-delay, 11 milliseconds. Low cut, 300. High cut, 950. Mix is at 17%. And this is a compressor block, but I don't—I have it turned off. Now, there's quite a bit of processing because this ended up being a full song that we uh, produced and put out with vocals, and uh, it can be found on iTunes and Google Play and <clears throat> Everywhere you listen to music, you can listen to this song. It is called Snakes. The band is my band with my friend Jeff Pluva, called The Partisan Component. Pluva. Pluva. I always say it incorrectly. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Jeff is a brutal, brutal death metal singer. 
His vocals really brought this, brought this song to life, but we're focusing on the guitars, and maybe I'll play a little bit of the vocals for you. So like I said, I have uh, one tone, far left, far right, and that is the uh, 90s metal alternative I used as the main guitar tone here. So let's hear what that sounds like. And I will turn off the processing. So that's off, and we'll listen to these guitars. A little bit fuzzy, you know, kind of scooped. Let's listen to the other tone. Uh, all of them together. So you can hear it's a little washy because it's quad tracked, but this is a heavy song and there's not a ton of single note stuff because I'm not that great of a guitar player. Uh, but it is just heavy. I wanted it to be heavy. So I quad tracked it. You get that little washy feel to it, but you get that girth. It's a little woofy. So we had to do some processing. So what did we do? I can have the mixer in front of me now. So this tone we have fab filter and what I'm doing here is I am high cutting some fizz hold on now just hold on a second I know what I'm doing. So we're cutting some fizz. I have it in mono so you can hear what's going on on just the one guitar. And that's applied to both sides. I have an instance on each side. So if I turn this EQ on which I did, right? Yes. I'm cutting some of the fizz and I'm cutting out some of those whistly tones. Now when I high cut, I'll kind of listen and bring it down until I noticeably hear it affecting what the notes are, and then I'll bring it back up. So basically, what do we have this at? 8,400, 8,464K. That's, some would say that's pretty low, but that's what I used on this. So if we bring it up... <laughs> So it still has the tone of the guitar. It has that tone, but it's getting rid of some of that fizz. And then those whistly sounds. You don't need to hear those again. Next in line, I have Virtual Mix Rack. So let's see what that's doing. So it's bringing out some presence. And... I am boosting 0.84 dB, so almost 1 dB at 7.5K, and then I'm boosting almost a dB at 2K. That seems to be all I'm doing here. Again, just a little bit of a presence boost. Here, I'll, I'll 
I'll take this out of mono and show you all of them. So I'll add the fab filter in, the EQ. You can hear it tightens it up. And like I said, I did this to both sides. So then we got the virtual mix rack with the uh, FGS, which I believe is a SSL emulation. Then I have the Pro MB, and what I'm doing here is kind of getting control of that low end, the palm mutes. And I'll show you, you can, you'll be able to visually see what it's doing when I add it in. See, so just it tightens up those palm mutes. It lets the rest of it breathe too, I think. And then I have some limiter, the L1. And I'm just, I think I'm just kissing it, just kind of evening out. See, it's maybe, maybe chopping off a dB, maybe two. And that's, that's it for that. Now, let's listen to the other tone. A little bit more of an extreme EQ curve on this one, as you can see. So let's add that in and see what it's doing. So I have a... Uh, a high shelf here, kind of shelving out some of those fizzy tones. I have an, a, uh, a notch at 3628.2 kilohertz, so almost 4K. And then I'm cutting at 350 hertz. It just tightens it up. Then I have the virtual mix rack again, and I think I'm making the same EQ moves. Adding almost a dB at 7.5K, and adding almost a dB at 2K. You can hear what that's doing. I have that Pro MB on there again, the multiband compressor, reining in those palm mutes. And then I have the limiter again. And that one's doing even less. So if we add those all together. wall of sound. Now I do have all those four guitar tracks going into a bus and I am doing some processing on the bus. Let's see what that's doing. So I have another EQ, Pro EQ, high cut and a low cut. So let's add that in and see what it's doing. Cutting out those woofiness. I have a dip at 582 hertz, and I think I kind of dipped there to kind of make room for Jeff's vocals. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I'm almost certain that's why I did that. And then I have a high cut just to making sure that nothing got crazy on the high end. It's just fizz. I don't know if you can hear that over the Mac, but just noise. I have uh, another instance of the Pro MB just to making sure, just to making sure, just making sure those palm mutes don't get out of control. And then I just have the mix tool, which I'm just, it's just basically a gain knob, adding a little bit of gain. Uh, and in the context of the song. And I believe I said it in a previous video, but I usually divide my songs up into chunks. Riff chunks, if you will. So each riff. Each of those chunks are all treated the same. find this chorus and I can show you what that Pro MB is really doing. It's really getting that under control it makes it so your low end doesn't get crazy. I mean, you have a bass in there. A lot of a, a good metal mix, in my opinion, is a balance between a good bass tone and a good guitar tone, and you don't need all the low end coming from your guitars. That's just this guy's opinion. So let's listen to that bass, that bass with... What's happening here? Stop being a fucker. The bass with that guitar. Let's see. And I think for that scary ambient melody thing that's happening in the background here. I'm EQing the whole group. On the virtual mix rack, I'm compressing this. Pretty decently flatten it all out. It's basically just meant to be sitting in the background. And I'm cutting one, almost two dB at 16K. Adding a dB and a half, 2K. So let's, let's just listen to what this is doing. I got some pretty decent moves here. So you can hear it's just cleaning it up, really. And I'm just flattening all those guitars out, because I have... 
I layered guitars like crazy here. I have four guitars here. So it looks like I have a low one and a high octave. And then I have it going to good old age of delay. I have it set on ping pong. Um, pretty decent amount. Yeah, I mean, without getting too into the woods about this mix, that is the guitars. Um, I'll solo out some of these. Dude, go listen to this track. Jeff kills it. I mean, listen to some of these vocals. You're not the pinnacle of man, nor your judgment to land. Insane. Um... I'm going to try and make a video on how I produced those vocals and mixed them. But until that time, that's the guitars. Um, go check out the video. We have a lyric video up. I have a playthrough video up. Um, and the song, again, is Snakes by The Partisan Component. And you can pretty much stream it anywhere music can be found. So, once again... Thanks for checking in, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all of that. I hate saying it. Bell. Like, bell, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I know these last couple have been a little bit long, but I know you guys like these tone explanations. And I like doing them a little bit more than just sharing the tone because, at least in the experience I've had with Line 6 stuff, you're never really getting a feel for what the person was thinking when they created that tone this way we walk through it together and you guys can tweak knobs and play around with it you know as you're watching and maybe you can kind of come up with your own version of this tone and make it sound good for you so that's basically my train of thought behind it plus then it makes you guys come back and watch another video on my channel so thanks to all the new subscribers thank you guys for your comments thank you guys for the likes thanks for the emails it's a pretty nice community everybody seems to be pretty cool and uh, this Helix is pretty badass. So if anybody's got any questions, uh, any suggestions for tips or tricks, shoot them my way. I'll try and make a video if it's something I feel like it's a good idea. Um, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next one.